Hello, it's Scott Manley here with part 8 of my little uh, tutorial guide for new players to Kerbal Space Program career mode. Now, uh, I have a problem. I originally had planned to go up into low or up into upper Kerbin orbit. You know, there's low zone and there's high zone. Get the science, come back and then send a probe to the moon, right? So I was going to do uh, an episode where I basically got the science so we could unlock electrics. Now, the electrics gives us this probodobodyne oxo, octo, and it gives you the photovoltaic panels. In theory, you can build a mineral-capable uh, space probe using the Stayputnik and the rechargeable battery packs. Uh, however, it's kind of harder for beginners, so that's why I like to skip over this. If you want, you can build one right away using this. Anyway, due to a uh, family emergency, I'm going to have to go to Scotland. So I don't know how many episodes of this I'm going to get in before I literally have to d <coughs> disappear. So anyway, we need to get the science. We need about, uh, about 33, 33 32.7 science. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to use the usual trick of driving around the space center. There's science all over the space center. You know how I've pointed out there's like highlands, there's lowlands, there's grasslands, there's beach, all that stuff. Well, um, turns out the space center is actually full of lots of different biomes that we can use here. Actually, I'm going to take the bigger one here. So I'm going to build a little rover. And it's not going to be great, it's not going to be cutting edge of technology by any means, but we should be able to use it to drive around with a scientist and collect all the science that we want. So I'm rotating this using the WASD keys, just in case you're wondering. There we go. Double that up. So we got a little tricycle. Going to put a jet engine on the back there. And where we have a jet engine, you always need to have an air intake. So this will drive around. Now I'm just going to add another couple of experiments to it. We have the too hot thermometer, because it's too hot, too hot to handle. And we'll put the little uh, goo experiment on top there. So I'm going to call this Science uh, Rover. This is really like a cheap way to get science, right? So I'm going to save this and I'm going to put a scientist on board because scientists can reset experiments. So there's Bob Kerman here. Let's launch. It's not really a launch, is it? So we've already done science on the runway. We've done science on the launch pad. Well, you know, we can go just a little bit off of this. So I'm just going to throttle the engine down a little, right? So I'm going to fire the engine up. We don't need a huge amount of thrust. You can steer it using the WASD keys. And you don't want to go too fast. No more than like 10 meters per second. Here, we're just going to run off the runway. And you can actually see the green edge of the runway here. As soon as we're off the runway, we get into the Kerbal Space Center, which is a different biome, believe it or not. We, so, we, so the science we get from the runway is different from the science we get here. Look, crew report. We're home. So let's break here. We're going to keep that. We're going to collect this data. Observe the materials bay. That's worth 7.5 science. Great, you see, we just need a couple more like that and we're done. This is worth three science. The goo seems bored. And of course, a thermal a thermal thing, log the temperature. Keep that. Uh, leave these brakes on. Now, he can, of course, EVA and do his usual science dance here. He can uh, take the data. He can take the data. Oh, take when he gets close enough. He can collect the data. And then he can restore, like, restore the base so the bay becomes usable again. Because he is a scientist, and scientists know how to reset experiments. This is actually a new feature in uh, Kerbal Space Program 1.0. They've tried to give new stuff to scientists and everything. So I'm going to take that data. And, uh, of course, a little EVA report from the surface. Look, we just got a ton of science there. So we're just going to walk back inside board this and uh, board it. Great, so now we can drive a little further again. Let's turn off the brakes. Engine back on. We've got a bunch of stored data here. So 2.4, 1.5, 7.5, 3.0. That's that's us halfway there practically. See how easy this is? So wh what building am I going towards here? All of the buildings potentially have different biomes. That's one thing to be aware of. 
and you can exploit this for profit if you need science early on. It is kind of tedious, but it's there and it's free. Well, there we go. A little bit of that. Let's try the brakes and then see if we get a new crew report here. We have a crew report from the administration. Um, well, I, say, I would say administration building, but it looks more like administration porta cabins. Keep that data. And we're going to continue this. Observe. Observe. Log. Now, there are mods that customize these science messages. Well worth having if you uh, get around to installing them. Okay, there we go. So, well, don't fall off here. EVA report. Let's get that. Keep that. Collect the data. And restore this materials bay. This is a very useful trick to know about the restoring of these experiments. Normally the experiments, these experiments could only be used once and you needed a special lab to fix them but that is that has been changed. Uh, actually I just want to take the data. Great! Oh, so now get in and drive. Okay so we've got the administration building. There's the astronomy building. The, uh, sorry, the astronaut building there, right? You don't have to go too far. There's even the flagpole. Flagpole, in incidentally, there is a bug in the 1.0 version, which meant that the flagpole would count as getting science from Paul. So if you took science from the flagpole, you would suddenly get uh, missions to go to Paul and do things there. Paul being a moon around Jewel. Uh, administration. Is this administration? We've already got that. Uh, you said that. I thought we'd get... Let's go to the asteroid building. Come on, get a little closer. Maybe if we just cross this road, we'll get it. Crew report. Break! Astronaut complex. Break! Oh! Bang! Okay, you have just failed. And in fact, we've probably got it stuck here because we can't really... Well, I guess it's going to roll back just a little. Keep that data. Observe! Observe! Uh, log temperature. Keep, keep, keep. And we've got that. So he can EVN. Yeah, that should be us having enough science and everything, right? So look, don't fall off of this. Oh, camera going crazy. Camera going crazy. And he's actually walking. <laughs> I should have put the brakes on, right? Keep that data. Go. Come on. Remove the data and restore. This is kind of hard, so this is why you should break, because otherwise you're going to be chasing after these things. That's pretty funny. Ah, don't fall off the side, because he, he's got no ladder. We haven't invented ladders yet, have we? Log the temperature, log the temperature, great. Oh, keep the data, take the data, and board. Okay, I think we should actually have enough here. Let's recover the vessel and see if we have enough science. 106 science and 394,000 funds and Bob Kerman didn't get any any research, but we have electrics. We can use this now to build a Munir probe worthy of our cause. Okay, so run in here. And we start out with the Probodobodyne Octo. It will of course need a parachute on the front here. And we should stick a couple of solar cells on the side so that we can keep it recharged in space. And some batteries are helpful things to have as well. There, so that's us got a functional probe. Now, for scientific instruments, we should at least make some attempt to protect these from the rigors of re-entry. So, I'm going to put the service bay here. Close that up. Or open that up, rather. And we can put our mystery goo inside, so put that in the middle, flip it around, rotate it, bingo. And a couple of thermometers, there we go. That's good, we could probably also put like a, an antenna on here. But I think we're just going to bring the whole thing back, so it's not too much of a big deal here. Okay, so we've got that, and we're going to put a science junior underneath, and then finally a heat shield. So we're going to send this up and bring it back for mutual, mutual science, right? 
So that is what is returning to the planet Kerbin. Now to get it out there we need a rocket engine which we're gonna uh, ditch obviously, it's gonna be on its own stage. This is the biggest fuel tank we have and we combine that with the most efficient engine, LV-909 Terrier. So the way you tell engine efficiency incidentally is you right click on the engine and what you look at is the engine ISP. So you see at ASL, right, average sea level, it's 85. That's rubbish at, at ground level. But in space, it gets 345. Compare this against the LVT45, you only get 320. And that difference is huge. It really, when you start building large spacecraft, it really becomes a huge difference. Anyway, we are going to use LVT45 down here, right? We're going to use that for this uh, stage here. LVT45. Now how many parts have we got left? I've purposely picked a design that won't need many parts. So I think to attach to this we're going to add some fins because fins of course will make, uh, make it a lot easier for you, the new beginners, the, the new players. There, okay, and that leaves us five parts. So I'm going to attach a couple of boosters to the side here. That's what's going to happen. Just two. One on there, one on there, and solid rocket booster on the site. We could go for the really big one. That might actually be a better idea. Ooh, is this a really big good idea or is this a really terrible idea? What's the cost difference? The cost difference the cost difference is puny. Let's just go for the larger ones. Because having more delta V is always nice. So I'm just gonna see how the engine's poking out. We don't have any launch clamps on this, we don't even have the part budget for it, so I'm gonna take these and try to make them stick down below the bottom of this. There. Oh no, just a little more. It's kinda hard because you pick these up and you can't see where they go. Let's try that. Ha! Ah! You are causing me so much stress. There, that's... There. That must be it. Okay. So the weight will be supported by these external boosters and that will hopefully let us get up into the sky and away to infinities. So we've used almost all our parts budget. If you find yourself that you can't build this without exceeding your parts budget, it's absolutely valid to go and upgrade your vehicle assembly building. I'm just trying to show you, you can actually do it in 30 parts. So Moon Probe. Probe, not Prove. Let's launch. So, okay, so we are ready to go again. We're gonna throttle up to 100%, enable SAS, and I should actually put that central engine on the same stage. We're gonna use it early on, and then we're gonna throttle back to like a very small amount of thrust as soon as we exceed about 150 meters per second. Immediately after launch, we're gonna turn over about 10 degrees and then let the gravity kind of carry us over. That should get us into space. Let's find out. There, so there's the turn. Get the turn going on. Okay, so now as soon as you're out of the turn, you can press T. Throttle down. This launch should be okay here. So we're just allowing the natural lean of the spacecraft to pull the nose down and initiate a nice smooth gravity turn. If you don't do it smoothly, what will happen is you'll just waste a lot of, t lot of time and thrust. So throttle back to 100%, ditch those, and then let the rocket continue following this path. Oh, those things smashed into each other. Well, we didn't expect them to survive, to be honest. They would have fallen quite a long way. Okay, so as we go higher up, what will happen is these fins will become less and less effective and we'll start to... Uh, we might potentially deviate from our direct path. We just want to keep this exactly in the middle. As soon as it starts to deviate, you have to fix that. And the easiest way is, of course, to just hit the T key. I'm going to go to the map screen, bring up my nav ball here. Just make sure we're still in the same place. There we go. Look, oh, that's our Apple apps continuing upwards. Let's bring up our resources here. You can see the fuel. I think we have 180 fuel in that uh, central tank. Maybe it's, yes, yeah, 180. So once our liquid fuel hits 180, that will be the end of that stage. And you'll see our accelerometer will drop down to zero at that point. 
So we're actually doing pretty well. I think we're going to get the first stage into orbit. And so we might even stop firing our engines well before we run out of fuel, but we'll find out. There we go. Let's bring the nose down again. At this point, you do want to hit T for stability control. And there we go. What did I tell you? 180. So that's good. We're actually in orbit, and it's time to ditch this stage. So now this part is going to be the part that actually attempts to go to orbit. So... To initiate orbit, we have the maneuver nodes. We're going to click exactly on the Apple apps, add a maneuver, and then drag it out until you get something on the other side. Then what you're going to do is turn your nav ball, right? Turn your spacecraft, and I'm using the D key to turn it, right on to this. And, oh, there we accidentally fired that a little early. So it says the estimated burn will be 54 seconds. And the node is one and a half minutes away. So you should wait until you're about 30 seconds away from the node before starting your starting to fire your engines. So let's uh, just do that. Let, I'm using time acceleration to let it tick down a little faster. And there we go. Bingo. Okay. So just throttle to 100% and watch yourself get into orbit. So... There's a bunch of different ways you can figure out when you to stop firing your engines, right? You can watch this bar and make sure you're lined up. You can watch the orbit and just watch for it coming out the other side and going above like 80 kilometers. What will actually happen is your peri apps and apo apps will swap locations. That's the sign to stop firing your engines. And also you could just watch your speed here. When your speed reaches roughly about 2250, 2275, that'll be you safely in orbit. So that's a rule of thumb if you don't have any other instrumentation. And I've done IVA only missions there. Watch this. See, they're going to switch places. Bingo. So there, 85 and 72. That's us safely in orbit. That's actually a very tight orbit, so that's pretty good. It also okay, represents so an excellent place for us to leave this. I'm Scott Manley. Orbit, Fly safe.